episode, we're talking about my trade tracker. It's the central tool that I use to track the finances in my trading. Yes, we all know the, all the different journey techniques you can use, TradeZilla, TradeView, all the different Notion templates that you probably see spewed on Twitter. But if you want to get serious about your trading, you want to track the finances. And this is a system which I have personally built. So in this episode, we're going to break down that exact spreadsheet. And at the end, if you stay to the end, I'll tell you exactly how you can grab your copy. So enjoy it. And I'll see you on the next episode. Uh, so I'm just going to keep this kind of short, stay sweet to the point. If you stick to the end, I'm going to give away this document for free and I'll show you how to do that. So what this document is about, it's about tracking the money. And like, I've always found when I had no money, the years when I had no money, I always found that I always used to keep myself as far detached from numbers as possible. The old saying, you know, just burying your head in the sand type approach. And over the course of my life, I found that the closer I get to the numbers and the closer I get to the money, the more it flows in my direction. We all know that there's different types of journaling that you can do, you know, like this, for example, add in your trade, you add in what you're trading, whether it's long, the date, the month, you know, all this jazz, whether it was a win or a lose, the PL, the gain. That's a trade journal, okay, which is great. And we can, I can show you later how you can link these into this document if you so please. This document is what I use and what I've created to track money in trades. Now, you can use this document for personal funds, but what we have set up here is it for proprietary firms. So you could literally just duplicate this doc document if you have multiple personal accounts, but this is purely for funded accounts. So it tracks both evaluation accounts and funded accounts. It helps build consistency because one of my rules is as soon as I input m the figures for my day into this sheet, I can't trade any longer. It also helps you analyze where you're going in wrong in your trading. So for example, if you have these massive spiky red days, it will show you clear as day where you're going wrong. It can help you keep on top of and in the back of your mind always what you're trying to do. And that's maintain consistency and keep your losses to a minimum. All right, you can use this to send off to your accountants if you wish. You can then add in that journal, which I showed you. If you track your trades, you could just add in the link at the bottom, send it all off to your accountant and they can do the rest. It can also help you when to take payouts. I've tweaked this entire document for Top Step because I've recently switched to Top Step. If you trade with a different firm, you might need to tweak these numbers in the evaluation accounts. So this document is a quarter of the year. So you'll see you can change these months to whatever months. I've just switched these today's for this presentation for June, July, August, September. So you could just block these in quarters. And what you would do is you would duplicate this entire document four times and that would give you your year. Okay. And you just run it in a quarter. If you start on June, so for example, you go into July, August, September, all with inside this document. And you can obviously switch below them, between them, right? On this bottom tab. At the top, we have funded accounts. So this is all your funded accounts. And then below that is your evaluations. And this tracks per week. So this would be one week. Below that you have week two, which is your funded accounts, evaluation accounts. Below that you have week three, your funded accounts, evaluation accounts, week four funded evaluation. And that would wrap up your month. Up here is how much you're funded. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm giving you all the detail, guys, if you're watching this. So up here, we'll tell you how much you're funded. So if you're 100K funded, so if you've got two accounts, it would be 100K, obviously. If you're only 50K funded, you'd put 50. If you're 250K funded, you'd put 250K in here, not 25, 250K, right? And this is important to change and keep up to date each week or month because it affects your net gain. This document not only tracks your daily portfolio balance. It tracks it by the week. It, it tracks your account running totals. It tracks your payouts and it tracks your final week balance post payout. Okay, then it's gonna give you a net portfolio gain. And then each week, depending if you make gains or losses, it's gonna give you a net percentage change on the previous week. So in order to keep up to date with that, you have to change this. So if you gain an account, you need to add 50k this is based on 50k accounts by the way if you lose an account you need to go down 50k if you go up an account you need to add 50k every single day the way that i approach it is if you have a funded account funded account and this is 500 accounts because the maximum amount of funded accounts you can have a top so that's five right 
You just put in your total for that day. If you make 500 on that day, on your Express 76, you'd put 500 in here. And then that's gonna give you your daily portfolio balance across your entire portfolio. If you went ahead and then traded 26, so for example, say you copy traded, you would now have a thousand dollar portfolio balance on Monday. Now say on Tuesday, you decided that you wanted to trade your Express 3 account and you made a thousand bucks on that account, right? And on this account, this day, you did it again. So you can see at the bottom how it tracks the daily portfolio. And then at the week, it will give you your running weekly total. So I don't know what your daily goals are, but this is how I track mine. So you can tweak them in your head however you do it, but it enables me every single day to see where I sit within in terms of my weekly goals and my daily goals. All right, so say for example, on this day, we actually lost 500. You could put in minus 500 and you'd see how it would adjust your weekly balances across your portfolio and it also adjusts your running total on that PA, okay? You can see that we've added up on this week, we have now made two and a half thousand and these are our individual days. And just for clarity at this point, the only numbers you change in this document are the fields where they are highlighted in light green. If you change any of the other fields, you're gonna mess with the formula. I'm not gonna help anybody with adjusting formulas. You're just gonna to have to start again. Only change the fields which are light green, okay? Set it. So put this back to 500. So you can see on this day, two and a half, two and a half is our running total. This week, we haven't, we're not gonna take any payouts here, okay? So this is our finalized week balance for these accounts on week one with our funded accounts. And we have made a net gain on our portfolio of two and a half percent. Boom, what a week, bosh, yeet, right? Amazing week. Okay. So then you go into week two. And what happens in week two is it pulls this information into week two. So you don't need to do it all again. It's all formulated. So it's all there for you. Okay. If you go down into here, so in week two, on Monday, on this account, we made 200. You can now see that we have pulled in the running total for account 76, which closed at 500 last week, and it's pulled into week two. Now we've got 200 on Monday, plus our previous week close at 500, giving us a $700 running total on our 76 account. On Tuesday, let's say we made 1,500. We made 2,000 on this day, 1,500 on this day, it's 15,000 X. All right, on this day, I don't know, 1,250. Okay, you can see same principles, adds in our totals, adds in our running total. So this is the gains on this current week accumulated on the previous weeks. There's our running totals across our account. So you can see here, we have our finalized week balance post payout, which is sat here. And you can see we are at 9%, just short of net gain on our portfolio. So guys, just wanted to let you know that my book is available on Amazon in paperback and also on Kindle in ebook. So make sure you go grab yourself a copy and do let me know how you get on with it. And uh, yeah, we call to see your comments on that. And we're gonna go into evaluations in a bit. We're just gonna focus on the funded for now. And this is just short of six and a half percent gain on the previous week. Another awesome week, right? What you might want to do at this point in time is consider taking a payout. We could look at account three. We've obviously hit our required goals that are needed in order to fulfill a payout. Okay, so say for example, we decided we wanted to take 2,000 out. So 2,000 out of this account has taken it down now to a finalized week balance of two and a half K on that account. Okay, so that goes in here. Say in here we wanted to take 750 out to take this down to a thousand. Like now taking out two and a half, just over two and a half K, right? What I like to do is when I take money out, is I always like to take percentage change on the previous week because it always means that my portfolio is growing. So you can see we've moved from two and a half percent in week one net gain on the portfolio to 6.2 percent net gain on the portfolio. It's given me a percentage change on the previous week that I can take some of that and my portfolio is always growing. And I never like to put that into a negative. Say you had an absolute, and this is just hypothetical, but say you had a monster week, you decided to uh, you know, take chunks out. You're now on a negative percent change on the previous week, which for me is you're going backwards in your portfolio and you always want a slight progressive increase in your portfolio growth. So for me, I'm always looking to try and keep a positive 
change on the week prior. And God forbid, if there is ever a week where you are net negative before you take money out, so if we just move these back down to zero, say we had a, a horrendous day. If your net change is below on the previous week, then obviously you can't take a payout that week. So it's again, you getting closer to the money, you getting closer to your, your finances to enable you to keep a consistent equity curve, right? It's really important that, okay? And it keeps you in focus. We could now decide if we want to take another $500 out here, we could, right? and so on and so forth. And you just re replicate the same thing. So every single week, you keep a track. And the way I do it is once it's in here, I stop trading on that account. It's done, it's dead, right? I cannot trade any longer on that account on that day. It will add it all up. When you have a positive percent change, that's when you're in the realms for taking money out. You never wanna take your percentage change on the previous week into a negative, okay? Just a general rule of thumb. Okay, so what then happens is down here, right at the low, and you, you do this for all four weeks, so every week in the month, it will add it all up for you. And down here, obviously this is the start of the quarter, so when you start this document, obviously your starting balance is zero, but every week it's gonna pull in the new week's balance, closing balance after payouts. So that's week three, week four, closing balance. This is your closing balance for the month. Total payouts, 500. Net gain in your portfolio is just short of 4%. Bosh, what a month, right? So then we go into the following month, July. And it's just a case of continuing because what this document will do is it will pull the information in from June into July. Beautiful, right? The same principles apply. It's gonna pull in all of your finalized week balances, your account running totals, and you're just gonna continue the process into week one or month two. And the same process applies. So whatever your balances are as you go through your trading week. And this just runs through August and September. That's how the, the funded accounts works. Below that, we have evaluation. So if you're running evaluations, we can do exactly the same thing here. So if you have however many evaluations you have, it's currently set up for five. So again, you can change these by the ways. If you want to change your express name, you just come up here, you'd click edit, you come to these data inputs and you just change these numbers, okay? And then you just uh, click apply for all and then every single time you go down, you just have your drop down, right? So if we go to this evaluation, we can see that evaluation 99, we can start utilizing this account. Right? So say, for example, we make 200. Now, the way that this works with evaluations is it's targeted towards the profit goal that you need to pass your evaluation. What happens is this is this is keyed to 3000, which is your profit goal with top step in order to pass your evaluation. In short, as soon as this turns negative, you have passed your evaluation with top step. If it gets to 5,000 without making any gains prior, you would have blown that account. If we made 1,000 on Tuesday, this comes down to 1,800. If we made 1,500 on Wednesday, this would take this down to 300. If we made 350 on the Thursday, boom. So that would pass an evaluation. You would have passed a vowel 99. It, opposite is true is if you the opposite, okay? So if you lost 1,500, lost 500, like you'd be at 5,000, you would have blown the account. And the same principles and rules apply with it, how it's just gonna track your daily gains, it's gonna track your overall weekly gain or loss across your portfolio. And it's also going to give you your closing balance across that portfolio and it's gonna pull it into the following week, all right? And then it's gonna pull in those remaining profit goals as well. Week one, we close with past evaluation and a blown evaluation. Then in this one, Monday we made 2,000. On a, when Tuesday we made 1,000. So we uh, again have passed our evaluation on this account. All right. And that literally is how it works through each single tab. And what's important is if you blow an evaluation, you need to go back through the entire document for that number and just delete the, the cell. If you were running evaluation 99 and you and you blew it in you know week two or whatever you just go back and you zero these all out in case you turn these all back to zero you change the number name okay and then you just restart that evaluation on the right hand side i've put in some notes to let you know how to use it so duplicate the document four times so you have four quarters and place in a folder okay it's essentially what i do 
only change cells which are light green, which are these cells, okay? So your payouts and your inputs for your day. To get accurate percent gain, change the cell under top cent accounts to your current funded value, as we mentioned. So every time you either gain or lose an account, you need to change this by 50K. It would change inside of the week where you gain that or lose that account. If the balance turns negative in the blue cells, you have partial valuation in an account. If you go above 5K, you have uh, blown the account if you've made no gains prior. Yeah, so when you start a new quarter, so if, you, if you've got this document and uh, this is like quarter one, all you do is come to the end of your quarter and then you just pull this information into the new document at the highest. So you'd pull in your starting balance up here for your first month of your new quarter which would be the closing balance of this quarter, right? So you just pull that into your new quarter's starting balance. Just down on this low, so you've got June, July, August, September, so essentially a quarter, okay, just at the bottom. So these are your tabs. This pulls across into the next into the next month. Okay, so if you guys want to grab yourself a copy of this, it's very very simple. Uh, put a uh, put a link in the show notes, which will say uh, grab your copy of this document. Uh, if you just fill out the quick form, and then where it says uh, can I help you in the future, if you just put level up, I'll know that you've watched this stream to the end. And then by the end of close of play today, uh, document will be sent out to you. All right, exactly how you've seen it here. Right. If you have any questions, guys, as always, feel free to reach out. You can just drop them in the comments and let me know or if you're inside red pill obviously just hit me up right. a little thing I did say i'll talk to you about is if you wanted to journal as well right so if you journal your trades right here you got your pay your direction your date all the, the sort of uh, minutiae that you might you might be tracking for january what you can do is if you're sending this to your accountant you know you can just come up here and you can just go copy link to view take that link uh, if you guys use notion uh, and then just add it at the end of your uh, of your month okay and then just let your account know but it's entirely up to you how you do that i hope you find value with it i uh, hope it dials in your trading and elevates your trading to the next level all right